Morning folks. Hi. So it's another day, another goat move here at Tappanoff Farm in northeast Scotland, Aberdeenshire. So me and Rosa are just out in the west field, um, getting the goats ready to begin yet another rotation of our silver pasture system that we have here, which is the integration of perennial trees and shrubs within pasture. The goats, the geese, the chickens all move through these strips of grazing interspersed with trees. We use the electric netting so that they don't damage the trees. So the girls are just waiting patiently behind me, waiting to get in. This last bit is actually the easiest bit because we've got this kind of smart fence, um, which, yeah, it's quite quick to put up. But really the bit that's taken the longest is making the laneways. Um, and this is something we've probably mentioned before, but um, it's a project we would like to put some permanent fencing in instead of having to put up netting laneways all the time. And the laneway is for um, the goats basically connecting the byre, which is just over to the east end of this west field, to uh, each of the different cells between our kind of tree rows in our silver pasture system. Um, and especially when you start the rotation at this end of the field, it's a very long length of multiple uh, electric uh, nets linked together and actually unfortunately going through not the best terrain to actually electrify them. For example, they're going along what is a partial fence line and that partial fence line has lots of kind of uh, tall grass and things. Um, so actually keeping the electric netting for the laneway electric is impossible um, and this bit aside from taking a long time to put up is also not that secure. So it's something that yeah, we're really wanting to improve by actually building permanent fencing laneways. But yeah, that's the bit that's taken the longest today. They're currently behaving very well and, and not testing that fence. Um, but I wouldn't leave them in there, especially after a few days of them having grazed an area. Because the more kind of bored they get, basically, the, the more that they've eaten their favourite things down, the more they start to look over at those tasty young trees we've got just on the other side of the net. So um, yeah, so this is th that's something we want to improve, but it's something that um, to, for today, <laughs> it's, it is just the same as usual. So you'll see this very, very long length of higgledy piggledy uh, electric fence for now. Fencing is definitely something that we've been dying to do properly on and off for a long time about embarrassingly long time I don't really want to mention how long we've been wanting to do this but um, we've got a lot of other things that we're juggling here there is positive though um, which is that obviously the longer that we've left this job the more we've actually been able to see how we um, move our animals which animals we're keen on keeping for example um, because obviously James used to have cows so it's kind of all changed since we got the goats anyway um, and just yeah how we use the farm uh, with the systems that are still being created um, in different areas so actually connecting them uh, through kind of slightly complex fencing systems it is worth waiting sometimes to do that kind of thing even with all the faff of kind of doing these temporary uh, fences. Need your battery. Okay thank you. Thanks. Got it? Yeah. <laughs> Today we're back in the market garden, carrying on with the work involved in readiness for winter. It's the type of jobs that we can do when we've got a window of good weather to come out and either remove some of the fabrics that we have to work with, whether that's insect netting or floating row cover, or just removing old crops and taking them to the compost, which is what we're doing today. We're clearing out a bed that was beetroot this year and we're getting it ready to plant our garlic crop in. 
So with this bed behind me that we're going to be planting the garlic in, like I said, this year it was a beetroot crop. There wasn't really much beetroots left in there. We've harvested them all uh, to sell through our CSA. So I just gave this bed a bit of a rake, just leveling out any lumps and bumps that we created through harvesting the beetroot over the last few months and just getting it ready for an application of either some compost or I think we're actually going to put on a bit of our bokashi that is matured that we made last year. Earlier in the year we bought in um, 20 tons of wood chip based compost which we started transitioning our garden into a no-dig garden with. Um, we didn't have enough to put it on this bed so we used some of our own compost which is why we were quite surprised with the lack of weeds that we had because often our compost can be a bit weedy because we don't get it always reliably get it up to temperature to kill off the weed seeds. So we just want to add a bit more fertility, a bit more organic matter to this bed. So we're just going to go and get a few wheelbarrow loads of that bakashi. We're going to apply it like a surface mulch and then we'll get our garlic cloves and just plant it right through that and hopefully that will get some nice roots established um, to overwinter and then start really growing next spring. So this is our pile of bokashi that we made about a year ago. This was our first experiment in bokashi making. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then check out the link to the video above, which is a vlog looking at making a really large pile of bokashi that we made this year. But this one's been sitting maturing for a year or so in the shady area outside the goat buyer. For us, this is a perfect compost mulch material. All right, so we're just starting to pile this on relatively nice and thick. We're not bothering with a 10 to 15 centimeter application as recommended for starting a no-dig garden. We already applied quite a bit of compost earlier in the season, in spring. So we're just topping it up now, adding some more fertility back for the garlic crop that's going in, some organic matter. It's absolutely teeming with worms. Um, so it's really great to see. We both love this bit of the job. Adding compost, especially when it's been made by yourself. It might look labor intensive and a bit messy spreading it out with our hands, but it's just the way we prefer to do it. We're only doing one bed, so we just feel you might as well invest in making sure it's all broken up and spread out evenly. And sometimes it's just easier to do that with your hands. So this bakashi is made up mostly of crop residue, old crops from last year's uh, market garden growth, uh, mixed with a bit of cow manure, straw, a bit of the goat bedding and autumn leaves so a really varied mix and that's what we love to apply to our beds is a if we're going to be applying a mulch we want to make it quite a varied um, mixed mulch different ingredients same with our compost obviously so that's us added four wheelbarrow loads i'm going to go and get probably about three more and then it's time to plant the garlic planting garlic for the home for next year and that's why we've only prepared one bed. Uh, we're actually doing two varieties. We've got hard neck which I'm just preparing right now by pulling the bulbs apart and a soft neck and we're planting about 300 uh, cloves into the bed uh, which would give us about hopefully 300 bulbs or close to 
uh, which we feel is about enough for our garlic usage for the house. Um, we plant them at a six inch spacing, it's six inch in row spacing. Our beds are 15 meters long, which works out as I think about 600 in inches. And then we do three rows. So it's 100 cloves a row um, and therefore 300 uh, hopefully eventual lovely garlic bulbs per bed. Um, this hard neck variety is from a company called the Really Garlicky Garlic Company uh, and they're based in Scotland and they don't sell a huge amount of variety but they sell ones that do well up here um, and this one is specifically um, an, uh, an autumn planting hard neck. It's called Ducot and we have actually grown it before and it was good. So yeah, so this is going to be take up at least half of the bed. We really like the hard neck because of the scape that you can get and we love to eat these, the kind of immature flower. It looks a bit like a kind of curly pig's tail and tastes really delicious if you barbecue them uh, or stir fry. Um, so yeah, so we really like the hard neck but we just thought we'd try out two different varieties uh, this year. I'm almost done uh, pulling these apart now but this will probably just do about half the bed um, that we've got the compost on there and then we'll have to wait to plant the other half another day. So this is something that we use quite a lot in the market garden. Um, it's, well, it's actually just two sticks and some old electrical wire, um, but it's what we use to mark out our straight rows so that we can, yeah, keep kind of neat planting pattern. Thank you, Warren. Um, and yeah, basically we just knock it in in the middle in one end and then drag it to the other. And then you can kind of keep them for later if you like. So I'm just unwinding this now. Um, and then we're going to be putting two rows on either side because we're planting, as I mentioned earlier, three rows in this bed of garlic. Um, and then hopefully it'll look nice and neat. body weight <laughs> <laughs> all right so we're gonna just start dibbing some holes with our trusty dibber I think some people call it a dibbler I call it a dibber and then we're going to be planting the individual garlic cloves about two inches deep this way up for those of you who have never planted garlic before you can see that's the bottom that's going to be going in the bottom of the hole with the tip pointing up, covered by the soil by about two inches, two to three inches. All right, better get planting. James is just gonna pace out to the middle um, because we're just doing half the bed with this hard neck. About here. Great, how do you wanna mark that? You just stay there. <laughs> Alright folks, we're going to leave you here today, finishing off the garlic. As you can see, it's a pretty easy job. Three rows in our 75 centimeter wide bed, 10 inches apart. Putting a garlic clove in every six inches or so, about two inches in the ground. So as always, thanks so much for watching today's vlog. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. It's a great way of letting us know that you enjoyed the video and that you want to see more. Give the video a like, say hi in the comments, and until next time, we'll see you soon. See ya. Bye.